Hi everyone, you are tuned in to know what my name is Neo. And my name is Lebu. Today we're actually going to be speaking about the risks that are actually involved in you buying property. I mean, we are property investors, big advocates of property investing. However, I think it's really good for us to actually expose the risks that you are exposing yourself in wanting to go into the property investing industry this has to be one of the most sensitive topics according to me because man it's something that i really love and you know criticizing something that really that you really love however what happens is that it truly exposes what you're putting yourself in so that you can love it more because you truly understand what it really is and not going into property investing thinking that you're becoming a millionaire tomorrow however grasp the whole process of property investing without any further ado We'd like to speak about the first risk that we have actually seen in the market, right? Is that your money is actually tied up in a property. So what do we mean by this? Say, for instance, you're buying a property today and you are actually putting 200000 down on this particular property. And then you do actually rent it out or you're trying to resell it back into the market. However, no one is actually wanting to buy the property because of various reasons. Maybe it doesn't meet the criteria of the market that you actually look into or you have actually overpriced it. And you overpricing this property not because you want to overprice it. In order for you to actually break even, you need to actually put it at market value. In order for you to make a profit, you need to actually put it over market value. So now what does this mean? This means that your money is in this property. And now you can expose yourself to many more risks, such as repossession of your property. I mean, I don't want to see you or see myself in this particular situation whereby my property is actually being repossessed and I put my money into this property. I mean, you've got a valid point, level. We all go into investments hoping that we're going to get return on investment. Breaking that down, if I'm putting money in, I'm expecting a certain portion to get out. However, now knowing that I'm actually putting this money in and there's a possibility that my property be repossessed, however, I'll be blacklisted because of an investment how controversial is that i mean that's the thing about property investing you look at some investment portfolios is that you're putting in money expecting to get out money right mm. or worst case scenario you're putting in money and then only to find out that maybe the market went bad you should see my face when you say reposition or blacklisting man that's the worst nightmare i mean that's crazy i think that literally pushes you as a property investor to run your business as a professional because i i know that's that's something that we went through you have a tenant and then this tenant is not paying you so the question will be are you going to miss the dates of you paying back or are you literally going to take a step and deal with this because i mean the law is actually involved in this because you know that you cannot just evict a tenant so now if the eviction process takes about six months the question will be are you ready taking into such an investment and i mean with the statement that you just said right it's easy for someone to think that the law favors only the tenants and not the property investor or the property owner this is the case if you haven't actually done things right what do you mean by doing things right if you don't have a lease agreement written by a conveyancer to actually stipulate the terms and conditions of living in that property, then likelihood of you having a problem is really huge. Because now what happens most of the time is that people go onto Google, search for lease agreements 2022, whereas the lease agreement doesn't actually stipulate everything. I know this is the question that we like asking people. Where did you get your lease agreement? Then someone will say that I bought it from a shop. The first thing. The second thing might be that I got it online for free. The next question with that would then be that how many pages is your lease agreement? Then you'll hear someone saying that my lease agreement is only three pages. When I'm comparing my lease agreement, I know my lease agreement is around 20 pages. So you're comparing 20 pages to three pages. Definitely, there must be someone that's wrong. By the way, guys, side note, mine is 28. So it also tells you a lot about my lease agreements versus Lebo's lease agreement. <laughs> At the end of the day, when we're summing up the first point that your money is tied up into a property. So going into property investing, you are truly understanding that the possibilities are making money. However, at the end of the day, if you're not doing right, you're actually risking 
yourself to possibly getting foreclosed or even repossession. So it's best that you get a team that actually knows what they're doing to protect your investment. Number two, gearing ratios. So when you're speaking about gearing ratios, we're speaking about very important ratios that actually have a significant influence when it comes to growing your property portfolio. So what am I speaking about? I'm talking about leveraging the income that you're getting and most importantly, the equity that you have on your property. I guess if you really want us to, because I know this might be confusing, if you really want us to break everything down for you, you need to hit the link below on Calendly and then set up a Zoom meeting with us so that we can truly discuss what does this mean. So what happens is that first-time buyers or people that do not truly understand how to grow their portfolio is that they buy without understanding gearing ratios. So you find yourself in a situation whereby you might have over leveraged. You find yourself in a situation whereby you bought an investment portfolio. You do not have equity on it. You're also running cash flow negative. That is a mess. Mm, headache. Because headache. Every ache that you can think about. <laughs> You'll never know that in five years from now or in 10 years from now, when it's time to sell, that the market is not in your favor. So you held on to this property and then you invested so much into it, looking at it from you were running at a cash flow negative, only to find out that when it's time to sell again, you're still not getting the fruits that you should be getting. So it's very, it's very important to understand the relationship between the three. The debt that you took, the income that you're getting from the property, and most importantly, the equity that you have on the property. I mean, this is this is quite interesting, right? Because I remember with the other time when we were actually having a chat with Neo about his loan, right? So now what had happened is that the bank had said that they would actually give him 110% in terms of his bond finance. So now when you're looking at the ratio in that way, that means that that's 110% of the loan. And then on the side of the house, you're having one. In that way, if you're looking at, if you go in deeper into your numbers in terms of will you make a cash flow positive, not only looking at the return on investment in terms of the percentage, however, also looking at how much are you actually getting paid on a monthly basis from this particular property. So this might make you run at a cash flow positive of 200 rands, but however, the question would then be that is the 200 rand sustainable for you to actually run the business? Because remember, if the geezer does actually burst, the insurance guys might want Point eight hundred for excess. So now, if you don't have that eight hundred rand, then that becomes a problem. You then ask yourself that how long is it going to take you to actually save until you get to the eight hundred? That's four months. Then the real question is that: Does this deal really make sense? I would give you two scenarios whereby somebody might prefer that they put down a heavy deposit. And that deal will make sense to them. So looking at the gearing ratios from that point is that this person is owning a huge sum of equity on the property. When they are looking at the return on investment on an annual basis, it makes perfect sense. Whereas somebody else's strategy is, is purely focused on making sure that they get the equity from the get-go when it comes to negotiating. So in that way, that person will be like, this also makes sense for me not to put down as much as a deposit. So it's quite profound when you're looking at the different strategies out there and the main strategy that you are actually applying, not only when it comes to rental, however, even so that I know that I'm going to rental. However, when it comes to gearing my ratio, which game am I really playing? I repeat, if you're confused, it's a must that you actually book your ticket to the Non Wealth event, whereby we'll be speaking more about property investing and we'll be looking at the different strategies, especially the financings that actually come with it. So it's a must. If you're lost, you're in the right place. You need to book your seat on the 5th of March, whereby we'll be speaking about uncovering property investing strategies. I couldn't have said that better. So now the last point that we'd like to actually speak about is that the development risks around that area. So now as much as we'd like to say that there's a mall that's about to be built in my area, as much as we'd like to say there's a school that's about to be built in my area, remember there might also be something that might be built in your area that will decrease the value of your property, right? Let me repeat that. I need you to get this. There might be some things that might be built in that area that will actually make sure that the value of your property actually decreases. So now we saw this with our recent deal whereby we bought this property. It was in a good location. Everything was good. However, 
RDP houses were actually being built in that particular area. That really decreased the value of the property. So now if you're looking at it from that particular perspective, you need to then understand that if you do see any developments going on, you need to go actually ask what is going on here. Sometimes it might be a developer actually coming through in town to develop the area in terms of them building a shopping center or building apartments. But now you need to also understand that how does that actually affect your property? So say for instance, if apartments are actually being built, if there might be a possibility that the market might actually shift more towards apartments. So now what does this mean for your property if it's a free standing house? People are more prone to actually buy newly built apartments than older apartments. So what does this really mean for your apartment if you're in that particular area? So that's this is something that I want you to consider every time when you see developments actually going on in or around your area. That if you do see a development, go and ask what is this development? Then ask yourself that how is this going to actually affect my property? If it's going to affect your property in a good way, then you know that you're in a good position. However, if it's going to affect your property in a bad way, then you need to know that how do you shift gears? Shifting gears and adapting to the environment. I like the example that you made. And I want to, to also provide another example that we saw in the property market that in this area, they were actually moving towards apartments. So they were building a lot of apartments. And now what happened is that there was a house that was for sale that had multi lets. It had multi bachelors, so the bachelors were not at a good standard. They were purely fair. Let me just say they were fair. They were fair because they had the toilet and they had a kitchen and they also had a bedroom. Only to find out that the apartments prices are actually even not high. So again, what market do you find yourself in? Are the apartments in that area renting out for a, a huge amount or is it relatively cost efficient because now what's going to happen is that if the prices are cost efficient they're not so high of the apartments and then you have your bachelors that are not at such a great standard you are literally forced to decrease your prices so now that's literally going to make people question that why shouldn't I just go for the apartment which is in the gated area? And I know that there's also other facilities. So that's another thing that you actually have to literally scope out as a property investor before you start investing. There's a lot and it's very important that you do attend the workshop that we'll be hosting so that we discuss everything that one might encounter when it comes to property. I mean, we will be there from 8 o'clock all the way to one o'clock speaking nothing but property investing so on the 5th of march i rise this because we will be at the clan Vista country club speaking about property investing we have an accountant that will actually be speaking about accounting and how to actually do your taxes and we'll also be having an estate agent that owns her own estate agency firm. Isn't that crazy? That will actually be speaking about how to actually position yourself as a property investor within the property market. No wealth? Invest like a pro.